Hi guys, this is Jake at Canadian Cutting Edge. Today we're taking a look at this knife by Kubi. This is the KU105. I bought it through Amazon.com. Uh, Kubi knives can be found in a lot of different places, but uh, that's one of the best places for me to get them at a reasonable price. Um, had it shipped to my sister in Nebraska and then she sent it up to me. I like this knife. It might be a little pricey for some people. It might be a little pricey for me. I don't know. It really depends on, you know, your own budget, if a knife is too pricey or not, and your own desires on if you like the styling and if you like the features and if you like the materials. And there's so many variables and that's why there's so many different kinds of knives out there. We each have our own tastes. We have our own desires. We have our own features that we're looking for. And um, so when I am looking for a knife to review, I try to think of what are my viewers gonna want and then I end up going down a rabbit hole and I'm never going to find the right knife that everybody likes. I'm not even going to find the right knife that half of you guys like. <laughs> uh, so what I do is I try to find a knife. First thing I look for is reasonable construction uh, or better. I like a well-made knife. I look for a budget price and then I look for what would be appealing and that's so super subjective that I try to come up with all different kinds of styles. And this is one of those knives that is a very common style. Drop point blade with a swedge, high saber grind, G10 handle scales, deep carry pocket clip, black. Such a very common knife. This one also has the axis lock system on it and it works quite well. I did the spine whack test, whacked on the back of this. My fingers are clear. I whacked on the back of it with a stick, quite hard, rock solid knife. And uh, if you're looking for a knife like this, I think you're gonna be interested in this one. Uh, stick around for the full review and see what you think of this knife. I'll tell you what I think of it coming at you right now. I'm going to do things in a reverse order. First thing I'm going to show you is how sharp this is. This has got the factory edge on it and uh, I've got just some regular copy paper. So there you go. That's just a push cut. Cuts quite well. Let's try the uh, left hand. So I'm trying to use it on the same spot of the blade all the way down. Cuts quite well from the factory, and that's a good thing. They did a nice even grind, well, fairly even on both sides. This side has been ground a little bit more than this side, and so the cutting edge is slightly off-center to that side, so slightly that I can only see it through a magnifying glass. <laughs> it's a very tiny bit off. Uh, here's the tip of the blade. It's uh, quite a strong tip, well made. Uh, the chamfer doesn't come right to the tip. It's just a bit of a chamfer up here. We've got um, G10 on the handle scales and check out the, uh, let's get rid of this piece of paper now. It's got a nice smooth uh, chamfer. Well, it's more than a chamfer, but these edges here. So it's got some angles on it to give it a, uh, a little more sophisticated flair than a lot of knives have. And that's a good thing. I, I'm tired of just having a flat G10 with some texture on it. You know. I like it when they do something a little bit better on it, a little bit different. And so you've got that um, on both sides. You've got a D-shaped uh, pivot pillar here so that uh, it doesn't spin free. You can use a standard flat driver to adjust it here. You can remove the pocket clip. You can even remove the uh, axis lock studs here off the sides using Torx, Torx, Torx everywhere else. Uh, torques here on the pocket clip and you know, it's just that one flat driver right there They've got a lanyard hole. That's in the perfect spot You cannot find a better spot than that for the lanyard hole That's where I wish all knife makers would put their lanyard holes I don't really prefer lanyards, but if you're gonna make one put it right there The only thing they could have done better with this is they could have made the g10 be removed right there so that all you would have is the uh, liners there so that when you tied it up your paracord wouldn't come outside of you know right here now they got to come outside of the knife otherwise it would be nice and close 
that's a little modification that a guy can easily do on his own if even if all he has is some sandpaper you can sand it until it comes down uh, you can just basically take off you know a little bit off that edge there and it would solve that issue uh, that's not really an issue I shouldn't say it's an issue it would it would create that for you you do have here a nice chamfer and a nice chamfer right there the knife is very comfortable in hand the pocket clip does not create any hot spots uh, if I use it in my left hand, this is a right hand pocket clip. My finger just rests in there. That doesn't get hot. It is a one side only pocket clip. I wish it was both sides. In my right hand, it doesn't create hot spots either. It's quite comfortable. It's a deep carry pocket clip, although, uh, you know, it is positioned so that you do have a little bit of the knife sticking out. But it's very well shaped pocket clip. It works quite well. There's enough space there, even though the screws stick out so that your pants go right up to the end. Uh, let me demonstrate the pocket clip and it just goes in right to the bottom on your first try and this spring here is strong enough that it holds quite well and so you don't have a lot sticking out of your pocket just a little bit not bad at all you've got fairly thick liners but there is significant skeletonizing going on there and uh, why don't I take the moment right now to show you pictures of the inside. I've taken it apart and you can see everything in there. Everything from what's running in the pivot to the skeletonizing. So hopefully that helps you think of this knife as being really cool. Uh, notice how even though uh, it's all skeletonized, They've done tiny little things like even chamfering the inside edge of these liners. You can see right there. Everything that if you get some of your hand in there, it's comfortable. Nothing sharp. These tiny touches take a fair bit more work to get it all done, but they do get it done and it works very well. I am kind of surprised that they just used straight pins for the open pillar construction instead of using something fancy, but that's okay. Not a big deal. What we have, um, you saw the ball bearings in there, and that's a good thing to have in the pivot. And uh, the axis lock spring is nice and sturdy. It uh, locks up very well. And uh, I did a spine whack test that I mentioned at the beginning. Um, I'm not going to demonstrate it right now, but basically you hold it so that everything's clear of this edge, and you tap the back of your knife. Well, actually, don't hold this lock part at all. <laughs> That's not quite fair. And you tap the back of your knife and see if it's going to close or not. I don't go nuts and whack it like I'm going, you know, I'm trying to fight a rabid dog or something, but, you know, just some good solid wax to see if it's going to overcome the lock and close on you. Nope. Axis lock is very good on here. No problem at all. Uh, you've got this high saber grind uh, and they decided to put Kubi's name on it right there. I don't really like having this really bright black name on this satin blade here. It's a little too big. I wish they would have made it smaller and then put it up there out of the way. Uh, not a big deal, but I don't like a lot of printing on blades. I like that the thumb stud is far enough back so that when you're slicing through things, it doesn't get caught on the thumb studs. That's a good thing. Got a nice flat area here to clamp onto for a sharpening system. That's a good thing. The steel that we have here, it's 9CR14 MOV steel. I like that better than 8CR13. Uh, it's not a whole lot better than 8CR13, but it is better in my opinion. Rockwell hardness of around 58 for this. Uh, some might get up to 59. Um, and, um, you know, it's a good little, well, not little, it's a good medium sized knife. Let's go over all the dimensions. Uh, before I do that, Take a look at that sharpener's choil. There, it's not a typical round circle, but it's very well done. So when you're sharpening the knife, you come up to the edge here. There's no way you're going to get into that plunge um, and mess it up. They could have made it a fair bit smaller and given us an extra two or three millimeters of edge, but what they've given us is not bad at all. What we have is eight centimeters of cutting edge. That's 3.15 inches. Blade length, so G10 to the tip, 8.4 centimeters, 3.31 inches. The uh, blade thickness is 3 millimeters, 0.118 inches. The blade depth is 2.69 centimeters, so 1.06 inches. 
the thickness of the edge behind the grind is 0.6 millimeters. That's 0 0.0235. So I like it to be about 0.5 millimeters. So 0 0.6 is a little bit thicker than I like it to be. It's not terrible, but uh, you know it's going in the wrong direction because every single time you sharpen this knife, the thickness behind the grind is going to get larger because of this flat grind. Whereas a hollow grind, you can sharpen a number of times, you know, where it basically stays the same thickness. Sometimes even if it's done uh, in a certain way, it might even get thinner for a while and then go thicker. Uh, but that's the grind. So not bad. I just would prefer it to be a little thinner at the edge. Handle length is 11.43 centimeters. That's four and a half inches. Grip area. So right after this choil to the end right here between my thumbnails, 9.2 centimeters, 3.6 inches. Uh, the handle thickness, not counting the pocket clip here, is 1.45 centimeters. That's 0.57 inches. So it's got a decent heft to it. Um, I'd like it to be a little bit thinner, but it's not terrible. The uh, handle depth, and it's largest right there, 2.5 centimeters, 0.99 of an inch. The total length of this knife with the blade open is 20 centimeters, 7.87 inches. So almost an 8 inch knife. And uh, we're talking about a knife that weighs 119 grams, 4 and a quarter ounces. It would be way over that with these thick liners if there wasn't that dramatic skeletonizing here. And they can do a lot of the skeletonizing because of the access lock. It saves them, you know, having to leave a lock arm intact in there. So really good. Fit and finish, excellent. I'm saying it's excellent on this knife. Very well done. Execution's great. Uh, the workmanship, putting it together, no flaws to be found at all. Um, everything's done exactly how it should be. Um, I just really wish they would have put the pocket clip option on the left side here. An access lock makes it ambidextrous to start with. So why not put a pocket clip on option on this side to make it thoroughly ambidextrous. It just, it ticks me off when they get so close to something to be excellent and they merely make it good because of that. That really knocks off some of its value in my opinion. Um, I really don't understand why would you go, you know, everything else is ambidextrous. Even the liner, you can see, well, maybe you can't see, but I can see that the liner has got screw holes. There you go. You might be able to see it right in there. It's got screw holes in this liner for a pocket clip. All it needs is that little bit of a mill out on the G10. So that being said, if you want to do this on your own, you can do that. Um, you might not be able to make it recess into the handle like they do here, but you could leave it clamped together, like the handle scales and that, and mark out where the holes are and drill some holes in the G10. Of course, you need a really small drill and you need to be precise, but you can make this into a left-hand friendly knife uh, with the pocket clip if you want to. Uh, well, most people can is what I'm trying to say, if you got the right tools. Uh, very comfortable in hand, very secure grip. I like the protection that the this choil that end gives you. If you stab into something, come to an abrupt stop, it's unlikely that your hand will go over. Um, lanyard hole placement's perfect. Uh, the screws can all be removed well, and the screws are, are well done. They're not too soft. I have taken it apart. A spine whack test, passed it with flying colors. Um, the cons for this thing, I don't know. Let's tell you the price. The price is $26.99 US. That's 34.77 Canadian, 22.58 euros, 19.88 pounds sterling. So it's about 25% more expensive than I'd like it to be. That's one of the cons for what you're getting. Kubi is one of those rebrander companies. They don't design any of their own knives. They take knives that other companies make and they ask them to ship them to them blank. And then all they do is put their name on it. That's why you don't see any other details on their knives. Uh, very much like, um, Fura does the same thing. Uh, Why Start does that with a lot of other knives. Uh, I'm not saying it's a bad thing to do that, but I'm saying that that kind of company um, should be able to provide knives at a bit better price, you know, because they're just buying the blanks, uh, buying the knives and just slapping their name on it. So the markup shouldn't be that high. 
Um, and the other negative is that no left hand pocket clip. Other than that, this is a really good knife. I got mine from Amazon.com. I will leave links down below in the description. Uh, just below the video, if you're watching this on a computer, there's a little bit of text and then it says show more and then there's the comments. You just click on where it says show more. If you're on a PC, uh, I mean, sorry, if you're on a mobile phone, I don't remember exactly where they put it. It sort of depends on the version of your YouTube app and stuff, but you can expand the text below the video to see the details and the links for Amazon. Uh, if you buy this from Amazon from my link, I get a tiny bit of a commission and that helps me out an awful lot. Even if you want to buy something else from Amazon, if you use my link to open up Amazon, you're going to be helping me out because I'll get a tiny commission of whatever you buy, but I will never have any access granted to me of what you bought. I'll never know, uh, except I will get a tiny commission. So if you want to help out Canadian Cutting Edge uh, simply by buying the same stuff you're going to buy anyways, you know, there's one way you can help me out. You can also help me out by liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing. And uh, I try to read all of the comments. I have not had time lately to answer all the comments. Uh, my son's getting married this week, so I'm super extra busy for the next while. Uh, so I won't be answering a lot of those things. If you do need to get in contact with me, write me at CanadianCuttingEdge at gmail.com and I will get back to you. Uh, right now, I could probably say within two days, but normally I could get back to you within hours. Thank you for watching. Thank you for remembering to don't be a Jake. Instead, cut towards your chum, not your thumb. Bye now.